morning, and thank you all for coming here to the closing session of the New York State Association of Counties Annual Legislative Conference. As I remind my mother often in church, let's turn off her cell phones, which she always forgets to do. Uh, we have a wonderful crowd here today, Governor. In recognition of your attendance at this event, many people have driven back to be with you here today to support you and what you're trying to accomplish for our great state of New York. I'd like to acknowledge Assemblyman Bill Magnarelli, who's with us here today. I'm on and down the and Senator George Manziar is representing Niagara and Orleans County. He's with us here as well. so much for all of you being with us here today. As we all know, we're in year, we are in year four of an economic crisis that we haven't seen in nearly 100 years. The challenges facing our state and local governments are severe and acute. But if you can't achieve a better solution in a time of crisis, then when can you? Governor Cuomo knows this very well. It's hard to believe that Andrew Cuomo was sworn in as governor only a little bit more than a year ago. In that single year, in the midst of this crisis, he has restored the confidence that our state government can provide solutions rather than continue the status quo. He began by producing an on-time budget, a balanced state budget, that eliminated a $10 billion deficit. And he did this without the usual cost shifting to county governments, without gimmicks, without one-shots, and smoke and mirrors that have been the hallmark of the past. And even with this fiscal achievement and other legislative accomplishments in 2011, the state and our local governments continue to face significant challenges. All of us in this room know that too well. As the state's chief executive, Governor Cuomo has confronted these challenges head on and continues to offer solutions. The governor's budget offers reforms to the biggest cost drivers facing county taxpayers. Among them, he is proposing a new pension tier that will save local governments $79 billion over 30 years. He is also of significance proposing a phased in takeover of the growth in Medicaid to completely free county taxpayers from increases in, the, increases in the Medicaid costs going forward. This is a long needed step in the right direction. And Governor, we thank you. <laughs> well, I'll the Governor to discuss with you today. And given his track record of getting things done, I have every reason to believe that this will be another exciting and productive year for the Empire State. And it is my great honor to introduce the governor of the great state of New York, Andrew Cuomo.
frustrated and wanted to get something done, you called the man who runs the entire operation, Secretary to the Governor, Larry Schwartz. <laughs> Listening to Steve's introduction, it's only been a year. This is, I'm starting my second year. But it was a very long year, I want you to know. I was, I was at an event a few weeks ago, and a woman came up, woman came up who I had known for many, many years, and, and she got right in front of me, and she looked at me, and she like, took a little step back, it was like a little startled, and she said, oh, you look, um, you look, um, um, I said, the word is older, the word is older, <laughs> that is the word. She said, no, I was going to say more distinguished, I said, yes, the word is older. <laughs> One year ago, I didn't have the gray hair, I didn't have the bags, I didn't have the lines in my face. I'll tell you how long a year ago. One year ago, Steve Aquario had a full head of hair. <laughs> that was how long the year was. But we actually did get a lot of good work done last year. We made a lot of progress. And uh, we're now starting out the second year. I did my state of the state. I just did the budget address. And now it's very important that we communicate to the people across the state what we're trying to get done. Because I want to build on the success of last year. Uh, and build on the momentum. Those of you who are in this room know uh, the problems that this state faces. And how long we faced these problems. Uh, and how far we have to go. So we, we had a great step last year. Uh, but... Certainly, it's only the first step on a journey, and it's a journey we're going to make together. Uh, I'd like, with your permission, to give you a sense of the presentation I did for the State of the State uh, and the budget that speaks quickly about where I think the state is and what we propose going forward. Uh, as we all discussed last year, we started off, we said that we were at a crossroads in this state that we had tremendous problems among the people of this state. The economy had reaped pain all across the state, and people were really feeling the anxiety and the hardship. At the same time, you had a state government that was dysfunctional, that was ineffective, that was scandal-ridden, that was frankly an embarrassment to the people in the state. When I was running for election, you mentioned state government, and, and people would, uh, would, would look down. They were so embarrassed at the condition of the state government. So it was a bad combination. We had tremendous needs among the people in our state, and we had a state government that was not in a capacity, didn't have the capacity or the credibility to make a difference. We said we were at a crossroads, we had to make a choice. We made the right choice, and we began to change the culture of Albany. We had a very good year in terms of accomplishment, and the legislature really did perform. We closed a $10 billion deficit. We did it with no gimmicks. We did it on time. First ever property tax cap. We closed 3,800 prison beds that we didn't need. We eliminated the empty area payroll tax, which was a terrible tax downstate, especially on small businesses. We passed the toughest rent regulations in 30 years. We achieved marriage equality for all New Yorkers. We launched the New York Open for Business campaign and our regional councils, which have been very effective all across the upstate in focusing on economic development. A real affordable energy policy brought desperately needed flood relief to parts of this state that were devastated in the floods. Uh, and when you think back to last year, you know, was the, the floods didn't affect large parts of the state. But the parts of the state, they did affect, they did tremendous damage, tremendous damage. And the response of this state was inspirational, frankly, the way New Yorkers came together to help our neighbors. We passed ethics reform. We attacked chronic high unemployment among inner city disadvantaged youth with an innovative jobs program. And we lowered taxes for the middle class to the lowest rates in 58 years, believe it or not. And middle class defined as those between 40 and $300,000. Lowest rate in 58 years, really turning around the reputation of this state as the high tax state. So it was a great year in 2011, but we've only just begun building a new New York. What does this budget mean for you as county executives? Someone told me you're interested in mandate relief. Is that true? <laughs>
In this town, everyone is in favor of the concept of mandate relief. And you ask anyone, and they say, yes, I believe in mandate relief. I support mandate relief. OK, this is mandate relief. Oh, that I have a problem with. <laughs> and that's been the discussion for years, for years. That's where the, the conversation never becomes real, right? That's the difference between aspirational uh, and practical. So mandate relief, we're in the same situation now. Everyone wants it. I'm sure you had everyone come before you over the past couple of days saying they're in favor of mandate relief. Yeah, but we want to actually get it done this year. There's two parts to it. First is Medicaid, which is a major cost driver for counties, as you know. The state program is about $8 billion, is the amount that the counties are now paying. Just to remind you, in 2005, the state capped the growth that the counties were paying annually. And it was a cap that was phased in 3.5% per year, 3.25, and now it's at 3%. So the counties are paying 3% growth on the program. The state, by the way, pays everything above the 3%. We have a 2% property tax cap, which you may have heard about. <laughs> you have a 2% property tax cap and a 3% cap on Medicaid. So obviously Medicaid cap is going up at a point higher than the 2% property tax cap. So this year we'll go even further and we will phase in taking over even the 3% that the counties now pay. And under our proposal for this year's budget, this year would be, it would go down to 2 then one, then in 2015, 2016, it would be zero to the counties. So the state would be paying the entire increase in Medicaid, which is estimated at $370 million a year, which is a lot of money for the state budget. But it's the kind of relief that we want to get to the counties because we know the pressure that you are under. And that is a proposal that is in this budget and we hope will pass. That's $1.2 billion in savings to the counties over the next five years. If Medicaid is number one, pension reform is number two. And this year, I really would like to get both accomplished. Medicaid is number one. And the numbers on pension reform are staggering. And we just can't sustain the growth in the pension system. There's been a 185% increase from 2009. It is staggering. And it is affecting not just the state budget, the state payroll. It's not just the county. It's every local government in this state is suffering under this burden. It's unsustainable. It has been growing. But this year, it actually has to change. We propose a new Tier 6, which would have a voluntary option for defined contribution plans, which follows a an existing model that now is in the state, TIA, CREF, in the SUNY system for professors. They can have a, a 401 type uh, option. We would propose that as an option for the entire system. This would actually have benefits for the employee also, because the employee could vest in one year instead of needing 10 years to vest, and it would be a portable plan. We would also propose reforms that have progressive contribution rates, 4, 5, and 6 percent, depending on the income of the employee, share in the risk reward in the pension program, and reforms that would end pension abuses by excluding overtime and other payments from the final average salaries. When I was attorney general, I did a host of cases on what I call pension abuse. Pensions were a fair deal that we made with public servants uh, who gave a lot of themselves and their families and in some cases put their lives on the line to protect the community. But in many cases, these pensions have been abused. And in the last years, there is a gimmick where people run up the overtime, sometimes double their salary, only to set the pension rate high for the for their retirement. That is not fair, it's not right, it's not what the deal was, it's abusive to taxpayers, and it has to end this year.